Hey guys, this is Fines Girl. Um, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of my Washington trip. And as you can see, I did my life touch and it shows you where I was. And that's the junk journal that started it all. <laughs> I wanted to take this to Ray Fines um, when I went to see Macbeth. And so some of you have seen it, some of you haven't. This is my breakfast the first day. I had scrambled eggs, a half avocado, orange juice, hash browns, and a wonderful coffee. And I really like the way they did their hash browns here. So that was my very first breakfast. My lunch uh, on one of the days was this wonderful burger with the fries. And oh my gosh, there were enough fries for four people just about. I could not even make a dent in this. And of course, I had my uh, favorite Coca-Cola. <clears throat> <clears throat> And at this part, I don't know if it's, uh, my voice is going over, but I had to follow the lighted hymns to go in to see the play. So that's what that, that was. And um, I'm showing you myself here just because I wanted to talk about the play a little bit. I had premium, premium seats the first night, which meant that I was in the second row center. And I had all the perks, free drinks, free uh, concessions. Um, I had valet parking and an excellent, ec excellent seat. And I had use of the VIP lounge. So um, it was expensive. The ticket was very expensive, but it was well worth what I paid for it. And I had a great time. I got stuck in traffic and I was afraid I was going to miss the play. And um, fortunately, I managed to get there without um, being late and thank goodness for that because i imagine i would have been arrested at the fit i would have thrown <laughs> at the venue if they hadn't let me in because you know once the play starts they're not going to let you in the doors shut nope not getting in but anyway i really loved having the premium seats i was so close to the stage i could almost you know touch it and it was great being that close to him and seeing his facial expressions and eyes and just, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And um, unfortunately, the second night I went, I did not have premium seats um, with um, all the perks, but I did have um, a seat in the fifth row and that was pretty cool. Um, also with the premium, I had... Uh, half price um, things from the gift shop and so I I bought myself a Macbeth t-shirt um, they had t-shirts and um, sweatshirts and stuff like that tote bags and also with the premium ticket I got a take-home bag and in the take-home bag there was an old-fashioned glass because Macbeth drank apparently bourbon old fashions or whatever and he had something in the play that looked like that, but wasn't really that, of course. And so that was in the bag and a bottle of, <laughs> a small bottle of um, Kentucky bourbon, which I have no intention of drinking. But um, I thought that was kind of cool. It was in the little bag and had the tissue and everything done up real nice. And also with the premium, I got the premium program, which is about four times as big as the regular program in size. And it has a lot more information. And um, so it's really cool. But I did get, since I was there two nights, I got um, two of the regular programs as well. Unfortunately, the actors did not come out on stage. I mean, come out of the stage door because there was no stage door. So um, I didn't get his autograph on the um, one of the programs. But then I have his autograph already, so that wasn't a big thing. The big thing for me was not being able to put it in his sweet hands. Okay, this is uh, the room before the room with the stage. They had a setup with a uh, old rusted, burned out car and all kinds of debris, branches and cinder blocks and rocks and trash. Well, not really trash, but uh, little little rocks and sticks and things. And they had um, uh, barrels that they had 
cut off and they had like fake fire. I think it was fake <laughs> burning in the um, the barrels. And uh, apparently at one point they had soldiers standing around that like they were warming themselves. But this was Macbeth done in like a modern type theme. So the people in the play wore modern dress. So like they had the soldiers had fatigues on. Um, this room is when right before you go, it's the same room with the car, and it's right before you go into the stage room. And as you can see, all of the stage room was black. The walls were black. The ceiling was black. Um, it only held 650 people, which it didn't even look like that many people were in there or could, that it could possibly hold that many. But actually, when you get that many people crammed, well, you know, we weren't really crammed, but seated together, there were more than you expect. And um, so anyway, uh, that's... Um, what the inside looked like, and the picture you're about to see. This one is what the stage looked like. This is when I was sitting in the second row, um, and that's some of the soldiers standing around on the stage. They were standing in the aisles and standing on the stage before the play started, and um, I guess they were supposed to be I don't know, <laughs> standing guard or whatever. I have no idea what they were supposed to be doing, but they were there, which was kind of cool. And you can see what the um, actual building um, that was used for the play looks like in the background. And that is the only building that was used in the whole play. Um, I don't have pictures taken during the play because, of course, that is not allowed. And... Um, so that's unfortunate, and um, I kind of wish I'd taken more pictures of the room before the stage, but I did show you guys the car. It's just that walking in and all, you're just so overwhelmed with everything. It's kind of hard to think about, you know, taking pictures and stuff. And as you can see here, this is from the Q&A that was after the play, this was not done in any of the other um, uh, shows in any of the other cities. And we think that this was done because I raised such a stink. Um, I was so upset and devastated because I wasn't able to put that book in his hand the very first night I was there. And I didn't have a ticket that night, but I went by the theater anyway, expecting him to come out, but he didn't. And so I was very upset, and I called the Shakespeare office the next day, and um, so they contacted someone. Look at that smile. Doesn't he look gorgeous? <laughs> he looks absolutely gorgeous. He's got a great smile. So they kept contacted someone to see if he'd received the book, and um, because I'd left it with... Um, Actually, it was some volunteers. I didn't know they were volunteers, and I didn't know if the people would throw it in the trash or what they would do. So it was kind of nerve-wracking for me to leave the book with them. And I told them that if he couldn't get it, because they told me they couldn't give him anything. I said, well, if he can't get it, I want the book back. And so I left my name and number. And I also left my name and number inside the book for him. But anyway, so there he is again. <laughs> So, um, before the play started, the assistant director came on the stage and said that they were going to have a Q&A, which hadn't been done anywhere else, and that Ray Fiennes was going to come out. And he said, and maybe some of the other cast members will. So, basically, I think it was probably eight of them came out. And um, if you look to Rafe's... Um, his right-hand side, which would be looking straight on the left, that is Indira Varma, who was in Game of Thrones. You might remember her. Um, but, so I took these pictures during the Q&A, and I think it was okay to take them then, but, um, I mean, there weren't a ton of people nearby doing it. I saw some, but um, I probably should have taken more. I didn't take a ton. But, you know, when you're looking through a screen you kind of miss some things. So I didn't want to keep staring through a camera. And, um, but anyway, so I was devastated about them not coming out. And 
So the guy told me that he would contact, I think he said the director, and see if Rafe had gotten the the book. Well, I said, well, could you call me back? Look at that smile. Ugh. And let me know if he did get it or if he didn't get it. If not, I want the book back because it took me months to make. And so he said, yeah, I can email him as we speak. And um, he said, when I hear back from him, I will call you. And so he called me back a little while later and said that they had put the book on Rafe's desk um, in his dressing room that morning. Okay, so that was the first, uh, uh, that was the day that I was going to go to the play for the first time. So he got the book before this Q&A, and that was well known that I was upset about the whole thing. And um, I said, you know, other people I'm sure are upset too that we're expecting them to come out of the stage door. So anyway, they made this happen, which was nice for people to actually get to talk to them. Because I said, you know, the other cities, they came out of the stage door. Those people got to talk to them, meet them, whatever, get autographs, pictures. And the people here are not getting that. So anyway, we ended up getting this. And no, I did not ask him a question. <laughs> I um, Everybody was asking all these technical questions about Macbeth. And I couldn't think of anything that... Um, I really wanted to ask about it, and so instead of just sounding like a fool <laughs> or whatever, I did not ask. What I wanted to ask is, um, I wanted to ask him if he, um, what was his favorite book? But anyway, I didn't get to that. Uh, this is the picture-taking area, and you can see me. Someone uh, took a picture for me. This was set up outside. And getting back to the whole Rafe thing. So, at the end of the Q&A, I had made a sign, because I wanted him to know that I was the one that had made the book. And so, when they stood up to go, I popped up and held the sign up, and on the sign, I had written, Rafe, I made the book. And so, he stopped as he was walking off, and he turned and read the sign, and gave me kind of like a wow kind of look and uh, gave me the biggest smile. And of course, you know, I'm melting <laughs> into the floor and I smiled back to him, but that was really cool. <laughs> um, and, and this picture, you'll see my breakfast another day. I really like their scrambled eggs and I got bacon that day and the hash browns and a pot of coffee this time. Um, and it was quite good. Um, but that just made my day and night that he stopped and read the sign and knew exactly who brought the book for him and who had made it. And, you know, I'd passed along that it took months for me to make it and all that kind of thing. As you can see here, this is my uh, lunch one day. I found out about the place that sold this. It's called Ted's Bulletin, which is an odd name. Uh, one of the maids told me about it. I asked her for a recommendation for... Um, a place to get lunch, and she said she didn't speak English. So, with a combination of her, my limited Spanish and me asking um, Siri and our gestures, we were able to uh, communicate, and I got the name of this place. And um, so, I took her advice, and I ordered food in, and it was really good. This was really good um, pasta. And I can't tell you what it was now because I have forgotten, but it was quite tasty. So if in doubt, ask one of the locals. That's what everybody says. And it was true in this case. And <laughs> it was so funny, us gesturing <laughs> and trying to figure out what the other one was saying. And we both laughed about it, and uh, it just shows you can communicate with somebody even if you don't speak the same language. It was really funny. Um, so anyway, if you're ever in Washington, D.C., I highly recommend this place. They had, um, really good food and, um, um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I think it's funny. I'm showing you guys my food, but when I travel, I like, part of traveling that I like is eating at different places. Um, 
Uh, I get so sick of the food here where I live. It's so limited and boring. And after you've eaten it every place a hundred times, you know, you're just sick of it. And you have to go out of town to get something different. And when we go out of town, for whatever reason, even if it's for the day, I try to eat at something that we don't have at home, you know. And um, I really like different foods, different restaurants. And so I really enjoyed um, finding this one in Washington, D.C., and this lady sharing it with me. And um, anyway, the, the, um, the maids were really nice here. And uh, this girl, she was she was fun. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> um, getting back to the play, um, the play was fantastic. Best one I've ever seen. Best one I've ever seen that he was in. And I am so glad that I made that sign. That was just awesome. That was perfect. Um, so that he knew that it was me. <laughs> And the fact that he saw it and stopped and read it, I was just dying. <laughs> that was so funny. And um, I had a good laugh about it, and I think he did too. But um, so, yeah, um, having the Q&A afterwards, it was really cool. Um, some people left, and I thought, you know, what's wrong with you people? Are you crazy? Um, why would you leave when you get to, um, you know, spend more time seeing them and listening to them, but um, some people did get up to leave. Um, not a ton, but some did, um, and that was before they came out again, but I, of course, had no intention of leaving because I wanted to spend every second I could at the theater and every second I could um, looking at him and uh, hearing what he had to say. It was very interesting. Um, this was on a, like a easel thing going into the theater, and it's obviously from the Wall Street Journal. It was a review about Macbeth and, um, about him, and so it was really cool. Um, he's gotten really good reviews for this play. I've read reviews from, uh, many different places, and, um, so it has gone well, and Washington was the fourth and final city. It went to Liverpool, Edinburgh, um, London, and then Washington, D.C., and uh, I'm glad it came to Washington. It kind of, to me, doesn't seem like that would fit in with the other places. I would think that, you know, it would go to New York or somewhere like, like that, but it didn't. And this is a shot from the second night that I had a ticket. Um, and you can see the lighted M's. Oh, and that um, the old-fashioned glass that I got in my gift bag um, for having the premium ticket, my take-home bag, it had this M for Macbeth on the glass. So that is leading down towards the hallway where concessions were and then the stage. So this is near the entrance and the bathrooms. Um, that's what you see here. Um, over to the left was coat check and um, the place where you get your bags if you have premium tickets and all of that stuff. Um, that's just a little closer shot. Um, I really liked the going down the hallway with the lighted elms. It was the whole thing was just so exciting to me. I haven't been to the theater in years, and seeing him in do something again, especially Shakespeare, which I've always wanted to see him do, it was really um, fabulous, and I highly enjoyed it. And I am hoping that I can see him again sometime soon. Um, this is an actual shot inside the theater before um, uh, it started, and that is what the building looked like, supposedly, I guess, the castle, and um, this was a, like a, this was built in each of the four cities, um, and this setup was used in each of the four cities, and uh, so... 
that section in the center, there was a cool part where it's towards the end of the play where Rafe came out. Well, he was still behind it, but you could see his um, shadow and he had his sword in one hand and his other arm raised up and his legs were spread. And it was like he was going behind the screen, you know, and or whatever it's called, the doors, lighted doors, whatever you want to call it. And so then they came open, and he came stomping out, you know, and he got into um, a sword fight. <clears throat> and he was killed in the sword fight, unfortunately. But uh, fortunately, they didn't have a scene where his head is being carried around. Because in Shakespeare's actual Macbeth, he is beheaded, and one of the characters carries his head around so they didn't have anything like that he just kind of was stabbed and cut and um he died on the top of the stairs there not on the second um not where the second set of doors is but right in the center <laughs> and i was so close of course i could see him breathing <laughs> but um <clears throat> but yeah that's what the setup was like there was plenty of room uh, I didn't feel crowded at all. Um, of course, I'm not a big, you know, a very big person. Um, but uh, I thought it was really cool. I thought the stage was cool. Um, setup was cool. It had some of those rocks and things around the bottom of the stage and gravel and stuff. And fortunately, nobody stepped on anything and fell. <laughs> Although Rafe did throw his... Um, um, his body armor across the, I think it was his body armor. Maybe it was his, yeah, I think it was the body armor. Threw it across the stage, and uh, in this particular f performance, it went all the way off to the left there and uh, landed at somebody's feet. It hit their feet, <laughs> and she just kind of looked down at it, <laughs> and then uh, eventually she kind of moved it and pushed it away from her feet, kind of forwards, and it laid there for a while, and they kept touching it and moving around and stuff, and eventually somebody, one of the soldiers, picked it up and moved it. Um, this is me at the end of the second time I went, and I had my picture taken there again. I went in my uh, outfit to the show, um, and the person kept moving closer and closer with the zoom and you can see what my shirt says mrs ray finds and the funny thing was so many people asked me if um i was his wife <laughs> i was like um no <laughs> and i was thinking yeah like uh his wife would be walking around with a shirt that had mrs ray finds on it but it was funny it tickled me this old guy was the first one that said it um and I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and um, this is one of my breakfasts on another day. I had um, the Belgian waffle. It had uh, maple syrup, butter, and orange marmalade on it, which was interesting. And the thing over to the right was um, orange blossom yogurt and a whole bunch. I don't even know what all was in the granola stuff on top. I know it had pumpkin seeds and things like that, and it was roasted. That stuff was roasted and then put on top of the orange blossom um, yogurt. And so I thought that was pretty good. I could not even make a dent in this, though. It was still too much food. And this is um, what I ate for breakfast the final day I was there. I had a latte, um, a breakfast sandwich, bacon, egg, and cheese, and for some reason, it had a, an arugula, they called it salad. Um, I don't know. It said it had that on the sandwich, which I thought was odd to start with. But then they bring me this big salad. And um, I asked for the spicy mustard because it came with that. I meant spicy mayo. I asked for that on the side, and that's what you see at the bottom. And I had two poppy seed muffins. Well, obviously, I could not eat all of this. I ate the sandwich, and that was it. And I took the two muffins with me in the car in case I wanted a snack on the way home. And I didn't eat the salad. I had the coffee and the sandwich, and I was stuffed. But I ordered in room service every morning because I had a breakfast allowance, and I just didn't want to get dressed and go down and deal with people and um, all that kind of stuff. It was just nice to be treated and 
have someone bring me my food. <laughs> All I had to do was throw on a robe and uh, open the door, and they brought my food in, and I just ate it. <laughs> so that's perfect. Um, I always love it when my husband brings me breakfast in bed. It's so nice when somebody else cooks and when they bring it to you. So I really enjoyed um, room service. I had a $30 allotment every day, and so I would go through um, what they had available and pick out, um, you know, what I wanted, add up my total, and um, because they had, like, even numbers. It'd be, like, five or four or three or six or seven, whatever, and so it was very easy to figure out how much you were using of your 30, you know, so, I do that every morning. And, well, actually, I did it the night before and placed my order. And um, I could get the menu on the TV. And um, also, they had cards that you could stick on your door and all of that stuff. So, I didn't have a problem with ordering um, anything I wanted. And also, for lunch, um, it wasn't a problem. Um and I bet you're sick of looking at this picture, but now we're going to change. I took a picture out of my window on my very last morning. I was sad to be leaving, and it was an absolutely stunningly beautiful day. Look at that sky. It was so blue, and I was sad that it was over. It just seemed to go so quickly. Um, at the beginning of the week, I thought, well, five days here, four nights, I bet it's going to kind of uh, drag on the off times, but it really didn't. It was, um, I don't know, I was busy the whole time. Even though I didn't go sightseeing, it was, there was always something to do or that I wanted to do or I needed to get ready in the room, like iron my clothes for theater or um, any of that kind of stuff. So I stayed busy um, the whole time, and of course, you know, I talk to family, all of my family on the telephone, and um, watched a little YouTube, of course, and uh, did a little coloring, that type of thing, wrote Rafe a letter, <laughs> which was delivered to him um, uh, the last night, and um, we'll get back to that. Um, this is a shot of uh, what I saw leaving. I didn't take a shot of the White House or any of that type of thing. Um, I actually did not see that leaving. I saw the Washington Monument and the Pentagon leaving. Um, <clears throat> in case you're wondering, I got a reply back from Rafe. I am not going to share how uh, he contacted me, <laughs> just that he did contact me, and it was amazing. I just about died. I got weak knees. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> Um, the, <laughs> he thanked me for the journal and, um, it said that he admired it in my letter and, um, um, that, um, he, he asked me, uh, how I like the play and, um, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, I don't want to share, uh, how he contacted me or everything that was said because it's private and, um, he's a private person, I'm a private person, and I don't know that he would appreciate me sharing, um, this on the internet. Um, I don't want to be the source of anyone harassing him and trying to get things from him that he doesn't want to give, and, um, I wouldn't appreciate that if anybody did that to me. And I'm not going to do it to him. I mean, I admire him. I admire his work. Uh, he's a great actor. Um, he's always been extremely kind to me. So there's no way I'm going to do anything to mess that up. Because I intend to see him again in another play. And I don't want uh, to be the source of uh, bad memories. So... I am not going to tell you how he contacted me. Just know that he did and um, that it was very kind and very sweet. And um, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, that's, I guess that's what I have to say about that. Um, um, 
Yeah, I have, uh, you know, I've met him three times and I have never shared um, online anything that we have said specifically to each other. Um, um, just because, you know, I gave you the reasons why. And also, you know, it's it's kind of my thing. It's um, kind of personal to me, something really awesome that happened to me. And um, no one really knows the details and knows what was said, except my family. They're the only people that I've told. I mean, I've told people before that I've met him and that he was really nice and stuff, but I don't give them details because it's really not their business. And uh, I mean, if he wants to go, as far as the journal, if he wants to go online or, or tell people in his private life or personal life, whatever, that he received this amazing journal from this lady and um, that t it took her months to make and he thought it was incredible and whatever. If he wants to do that, that's on him. That's his business. Um, but I am not going to... Um, do anything to harm him in any way so that's uh basically what i have to say about that um but anyway i hope you guys still enjoyed um uh, watching my video and getting the details that i do want to share and uh yeah i had a great time the play was incredible. He was incredible. Um, it renewed my um, interest in Shakespeare, and I can't wait to um, read some more Shakespeare, and I'd like to see him do some more. And, um, yeah, so um, um, if you would do all the things, that would help my channel out, and you can tell me in the comments how you, what you thought of my trip, and... Um, if you are a fan of his, fan of his, you can tell me what your favorite movie of his is. A lot of people will only know him as Voldemort. He has done so much more than that. Um, I can't choose a favorite because I have too many <laughs> favorites. A couple of mine that he did are um, The English Patient and um, Quiz Show. That I really love those two. But um, basically, I love anything he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, I'm going to end this now, and I hope you enjoy. Talk to you later.